like to introduce um, our next speaker a little bit earlier than we planned, but um, this is the way we have to rock and roll these days. So our next speaker is Dr Liz Bennett from the University of Huddersfield. And at Huddersfield, Liz is the Director of Teaching and Learning within the School of Education and Professional Development. Liz's research focuses on digitally augmented education from the perspectives of students, teachers and the institution. Her major body of work has focused on student dashboards and her work on students' responses to dashboards was awarded Research of the Year Award from the Association for Learning Technology in 2017. She is also one of the editors of Research in Learning Technology, the journal of the Association for Learning Technology. So I'd now like to invite Liz to come and offer her talk. And I'll just remind people that we are still recording this session. And if you have questions, please do post them in the chat and I'll come back on at the end to uh, invite people onto the screen to ask their questions. So Liz, we'll hand over to you for your talk, Learner Dashboards, Can They Support Student Agency and Empowerment? Thank you. Thanks, Jared. Um, so this is some work that I did that was uh, supported by the Society for Research in Higher Education and looking at the way that students responded to seeing their data presented back to them on a dashboard. So what we're talking about is these sort of graphical displays that take students data that we ca capture about them. So it could be their attendance monitoring or it could be their engagement with the VLE and which we could be pre um, presenting how a students interacted with how uh, the rest of the cohort have interacted. Or it could be how they've achieved and how that compares to the average, or it could be a prediction a prediction of what they could be getting. So this is a bit like the weather forecast where we take this data and we say, well, given your attendance and your real activity and your prior attainment, this is what we think you're on track for using an algorithm to calculate that score. And this work was, um, I think, is needed because we need to listen to the voices of students. Um, there's been tended to be a focus on the institutional perspectives, such as student retention as a, as a, as a metric, rather than how does it feel from a student point of view? Because arguably sometimes for a student to withdraw, that is a positive student outcome for that individual. And we also need to understand the whys, you know, why do students behave the way they do rather than looking at their behaviours as um, data, as Mary critiqued um, earlier. So, as I say, this was a study that was um, funded by the SRHE and it was about trying to understand from a theoretically informed perspective how students receive this data this feedback from their dashboard, from a hypothetical dashboard, how they receive it and how they interpret it. And the interesting thing was that whilst it was a relatively small study with only 24 undergraduates, we made sure that we, um, we used a small cohort where we could get um, students who were um, across the whole range, as well as um, we used a bigger cohort where we got um, people who volunteered. So we had a rate, we had two different slices of the data. And I'm going to present um, two case studies. Um, first one is Justine. So Justine was a high attaining student. She just got 75% on her most recent assignment and she was on track for getting a first. That was her average score. Um, and so this assignment was pulling her up. She'd come 15th out of this very large cohort of 180 students. So you might ask, well, she must have felt good about herself there to have been in the first, to be doing better on this assignment than on her average. But no, what she said was, 14 other people have, have, have done better than me and I thought I'd really topped it, I'd really maxed out and it's taken away from that feeling of elation. 
And then at the end, when I asked her if she'd anything else to add, she came back and she said, well, I'm happy with that, the mark, but I didn't need to know what position I'm in because I thought I'd done better than the majority and I was happy with the grade. Um, and the positional data makes me feel as though I could have um, I could have done better. So it took away from her feeling. Whereas India was had scored um, a third class degree in this assignment, 58 percent. But her on track score was slightly higher, 61. So this this assignment was pulling her down. She'd come bottom of her cohorts. And you might think we were quite anxious about showing people their positional data. Um, but what she said was, um, I think it gives me motivation to try harder. Um, and uh, yeah, straight away, what I'm more focused on is the overall. Um, so she wasn't bothered about details. She was she was she could see big picture. So very different responses that couldn't be predicted on the basis of their score or even what the score was doing to their overall average. And it makes the point that these are um, humans here. They're not data points. They're humans and they, they interpret things differently based on their past educational experiences. So when looking at to how we theorise that, we came to various models of feedback. And more recently, I've been using uh, Naomi Winston's and David Carlos's model of, of feedback to think about this data. And so what uh, what um, Naomi and David said is that think of feedback rather than as um, the old paradigm of a, a gift where it's like a letter that's popped in a pigeonhole. Rather think of it as uh, something that forms the basis of dialogue and discussion. And they thought in the old paradigm, we'd be talking about the metrics of turnaround time and how detailed the comments are. But in the new paradigm, we're talking about how actionable these comments are, how they relate to future tasks. What are they going to impact on the students learning? And I think this is a helpful way of seeing how we're going to we might uh, use data to change students behaviours in ways that are uh, in tune with their thinking and constructive. So the values of the old paradigm would be efficiency and timeliness and consistency. But with the new paradigm, we're thinking about how is it going to impact on students learning? How is it going to affect their sense of agency? How is it going to affect how they feel empowered to change? Um, so these are the questions that we should be asking, I would be arguing, when we're designing new dashboards. And so we came up with um, four principles that we think help to uh, direct people uh, in both designing and delivering dashboards for students that uh, flow from our data. So I'm going to talk about each of those a little bit, but only a little bit. So the first one is customizable. So we've got customizable, sense making, actionable and embedded. So customizable means that it provides students with a sense of agency through enabling them to choose how they see their data. Um, so uh, Malcolm wasn't interested in what everyone else was doing. He was only interested in himself um, and what he needed to do. So he didn't want to see averages. And indeed, we heard that Justine didn't want to see an average. So can students, can they, can they select that what they're seeing that suits their personality types and their learning needs? So that'd be my first um, expectation and demand of, of, a, of a dashboard. It should be customizable to suit students. And the second one, obviously, it needs to help make sense. So Malcolm, again, knew that he would just thrown in this essay because he was going through some personal stuff. So he wants to know, you know, can he take out, can he um, can he see how that particular essay that was done at a time of stress, um, how that how that one's um, uh, how that one sits as an anomaly with the others. He knew it was going to be lower. Um, so what students don't want to know is zillions of tools they have that, that have bloated features, but they want to have uh, things that are easy to use and intuitive that help them to make sense of their particular circumstances. And I think that's the next question I'd be asking of dashboard designers. How do students make sense of this data in ways that are clear? And the third one is about how do they know what they're going to do as a result of it? How are they going to make informed choices? Um, and the quote here is from Lydia. Um, I, um, I'd want to get that up a bit, she says, because I don't really like where I am. 
So she knows that she's not happy, but does she know what to do next? And how do we provide um, guidance to students based on um, the, the data um, in ways that are really constructive? So it might be to signpost them to particular learning support, to particular resources. So how do we help them to identify the what next step? And that's particularly true, I think, of seeing these as tools within the broader educational uh, landscape um, so that we're seeing them as supporting the quality of relationships that we have in students between students and tutors. So the quote here is from a student who says, um, uh, we usually do tutorials where we talk about our our assignments and drafts and things and you've got time to prepare and ask questions. Um, and then the feedback um, helps. And so, so the point here is that the student knows that they've got a wider, wider ways in which they can get support and they see this feedback as not isolated, but as part of those ongoing conversations that they have with colleagues, uh, with their with their um, with their tutors. So how do we enable this this feedback to be incorporated into those conversations? Um, so are we? Yeah. So so how do we bring that back into um, our normal processes and thinking about our personal academic tutorial processes and how we uh, feed forward into those? So in summary, um, we found that dashboards were welcomed by students. Uh, we didn't find any that didn't want to see their data. They knew that we were collecting data about them. We knew that they had the, what we also found out was that they had the potential to motivate that students were interested in getting this data and it helped them to think about the what next and the where it's where they stood. But this uh, use of uh, prediction where algorithms could take them to where they might be was less helpful um, and more stressful. Um, so they didn't want to know um, they didn't want to gather data you know they didn't want um, algorithms to, to, to formulate um, the where next. Uh, so what we what we concluded is that they have some potential to uh, support um, change and to support positive student engagement in their learning, but we must keep keep foregrounded these fact that they're part of the human system um, in which um, uh, students need to have agency and feel empowered and also need to use them as tools for dialogue with uh, with their tutors. So that's that's me. I think that's my last one. Thank yeah. Thank you, Liz, for that really fantastic talk and for stepping in. Um, I've just posted in the chat if it's OK with both Liz and Michelle, we, we've lost a little bit of time uh, due to the unfortunate technical difficulties Michelle's had. So what we thought we'd do, if it's OK with you both, we'll allow Michelle to finish her talk now and then we'll host a sort of joint Q&A session after Michelle has finished. So um, if people can keep the questions, post them in the chat and um, at the end I will invite you to come in and ask questions to both Liz and to Michelle. So Michelle, we're delighted you've managed to get back.